So today, I have a very unique interview for you all. This is Chekhov. He's a newbie voice actor just getting into the business. How you doing, Chekhov? Thank you for uh, stopping by. Oh, I'm doing well. Looks like my mother just called me. I missed the call, but I don't think I want to talk to her while I'm doing this. Or at least about this at all. Interestingly, though, my father does know what I do, and he knows because I was wildly drunk one day, um, and I said, Father, I work for pornography. <laughs> and that sentence is kind of nonsense, but I think he got the gist. <laughs> oh, this is great. This is great. Now, this is how you start an interview, everybody. <gasps> okay. Oh, wait, so... wait, 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 wait. Stop. Before we go any further, fuck! Now that you're demonetized, we can keep going. <laughs> Had to make sure that was out of the way, so now we can talk about, like, titties and shit. <laughs> You're like the male version! You're like the male version of Miss Moonified! This is amazing! <laughs> Tell you what, she's fucking most of my Twitter feed. Maybe she's just <laughs> rubbing off on me. <laughs> okay, questions! Questions! Where are my questions? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So, uh, check off. What made you decide to start getting into voice acting? What was your inspiration? Well, I tell you what, my, uh, uh, it's not really about voice acting, right? It's about, hear me out, dramatic pause, acting. Uh, I mean, I started uh, uh, stage acting in high school, and then more recently, I just haven't done any stage acting because, uh, um, well, everywhere around me keeps doing fucking musicals, and I don't give a fuck about musicals. Anyway, so I wanted to do something else. Uh, I watched, um, well, now I'd call him a friend. At the time, he was just a guy on the internet. But I saw a video by a, a friend of mine, and I saw that he had credits at the end of his uh, uh, hentai video. And I was like, hentai? That's my jam. And then I saw the credits, and I'm like, those aren't even real names. That means that this is something I could fucking do remotely in my fucking dormitory. Now I'm just wondering how I'm going to tell my next roommate about it. Well, well then, but I, so I have to ask the follow-up question. Why hentai? What, what was your uh, drive to get into this business? Well, the short answer is titties. The longer answer is that, I, you know, I've always been fascinated by the idea of sexuality. And I'm not going to say always, actually, because at once upon a time, I was a fetus. And then after that, a child. But uh, um, here, let me give you an anecdote, right? Um. In high school, for example, a friend of mine told me that she was into DDLG. Now, I found out after the fact that she thought that our conversation meant that I also was into that. I was not. Um, however, if anyone's looking for someone to say some DDLG shit into a microphone, hit me up. Um, so basically, I found out that she had uh, uh, thought that I was also into it whenever uh, someone who I did not know approached me in the hallway and... Um, grabbed me by the arm and pulled me off to the side of the hallway and showed me a note on her phone. And the note had said um, something like, hey, um, I'm a little, my daddy just broke up with me. I heard that you might be someone to go to about this. And I said, what? <laughs> because I, at this point, am like a fucking uh, virgin sophomore. Actually, no, I might not have been a virgin at the point. But, you know, <laughs> proverbial virgin anyway. <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't really remember exactly where this falls in, you know, the timeline that is this epic saga. But anyway, um, then it just became like, you know, public knowledge, incorrect public knowledge around my school that that was a thing that I was into. So people were really open with me about their kinks because they were like, hey, man, listen to this. Uh, um, for a while, I was involved with a girl who um, was real into knife play. That was probably the most like I've ever been about it. But, Wait, uh, hold you know, it, hold it. Actually, I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to stop you. But did you just say knife play? Yeah, like I mean, she had like a specific knife. I mean, she sanitized it. It wasn't like a, you know, gross thing. All right, all right. Please continue. Oh, anyway, uh, um, yeah. But actually, the girl from earlier who showed me the note on her phone ended up um, making collars, um, like real crafty, cute um, Etsy collars. Um, and she ended up making ones that she called BDSM proof, which just meant that she um, she lined them with polypropylene so they wouldn't tear or anything. And they were fucking snazzy as hell. I actually bought two. Um, <laughs> but then it just... I mean, not for, like, me to wear. <laughs> but anyway, uh, um, 
Yeah, but she ended up uh, selling them to uh, online, right? And then people at the school found out, and then people at the school started buying them, and then it just became this weird branding thing where you would walk down and you're like, oh, little, little, little. And I had a very DDLG school. It was very weird. Um, yeah, I mean, so, I mean, the idea of sexuality, this is just an anecdote uh, to go along with it, has always been something that's fascinated me. Uh, I mean, especially, like, I wouldn't consider myself a terribly, one that always gets me right is the ones that sound not sexual at all, but that's the thing that gets people going. Uh, always gets me right, right is the ones that sound not sexual at all, but that's the thing that gets people going. Um, vor is a big one. I don't understand that shit at all, but it gets people wild. And I need to talk to someone about it because I don't understand. I dated a girl that was into water sports once. I was like, I don't understand, but I'm fascinated. I don't want to try, but I'm fascinated. Um, which realistically, if I were to, tr uh, if I were seeing someone now who said that, I'd probably be like, yeah, I mean, I'll try anything once. Um, but at the time I was like a 16 year old and I had lost my virginity a week prior. Whoo! Alrighty, alrighty. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Any follow-up questions on that, or I'm just give me a moment. I'm trying to process all that. Like, holy shit! I I must say, Chekhov, you are a remarkable man. Remarkable, remarkable man. I've heard some crazy stories in these interviews, but you, my man, you are a you are a special snowflake. I mean, hey, man. First of all, we'll get back to that. Um. I don't know that this is any more wild because I've seen a few of the videos, you know, I know I, I don't think this is any more wild than like Waver saying that he uh, or they I don't know what the situation is there because Waver said by gender, etc. Anyway, fucked in a graveyard. I don't think this is any more wild than that. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm 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 honored that you watch my videos. You've watched the interviews. Oh, that's that's so sweet. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I don't know that I've seen all of them, but I have seen quite a few. Well, again, thank you. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. I mean, it's such like, it's a niche topic. I mean, no one really does what you do. I mean, you know, you, basically, you're doing a true humanitarian service. Wait, what? Oh, wh why? Why are you making this about me? Oh, you that's so nice. Oh, jeez, my heart. Because you're, because you're a sweetheart. I love you. Kisses. Mwah. Oh, stop. You're killing me. Oh, this, this interview did not go how I planned. <laughs> Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, back to you, though. Back to you, though. Me? Uh, oh, okay. Yes. Y yes, you. <laughs> this is your interview. Oh, shit. Now you tell me. <laughs> oh, on the topic of voice acting. So I, I can understand your curiosity when it comes to the more lewd side of things, but voice acting in general, what, what inspired you to get into voice acting, period? Oh, yeah. I suppose I kind of just, like, brushed over that. <laughs> Uh, well, the short answer is um, uh, John DiMaggio is like the wet dream of a human. Goodness me, what a what what a golden person! Uh, have you seen? He has a documentary called "I Know That Voice." Yes, I've watched that. Yes. Oh my God, so good. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like that was um, you know the first thing that I really saw that really drove home the idea that uh, um, they said it a thousand times in the documentary that. Voice acting is not just making a funny face, or a funny voice, rather. Uh, voice acting is acting without the aid of any kind of physical element, which, as a person who enjoys a challenge, is fucking appealing to me. Um, also, oh goodness, I grew up on mostly, like, fucking Futurama. That was my shit. Uh, I know that the same guy did Disenchantment and Simpsons. I've seen maybe one episode of each. Futurama, I fucking love that shit. So John DiMaggio and uh, um, Billy West, holy fuck. Billy West had an insane range. Are you familiar with Futurama? I don't want to just go off on Yes. That. No, I am. I am. I am. But, I am. You know, Please continue. Billy West voices like half the characters in that. He's remarkable. And then, uh, so I feel like the range of Billy West was incredibly inspiring. And then John DiMaggio just, he, he's, I've seen him do a couple of different things and he just, he really brings out a very unique energy that I really appreciate in anything he does. You know, him as Joker, I would say is one of my favorites. Goodness me. Uh, um, he also did uh, Jake the dog. I've recently, my girlfriend's been showing me uh, um, Adventure Time, which I hadn't seen before, but uh, I think that's quite charming. And he is remarkable in that. 
Not to mention that they bring in a ton of guests that are like huge names, like Mark Hamill's been in a few episodes. Tom Kenny is one of the leads. Um, Tara Strong. Uh, George Takei even shows up as a fucking heart with prosthetic limbs. <laughs> so yeah, the short answer is Billy West and John DiMaggio. Well, they are they are one of a kind people. They are extremely talented voice actors. I can understand uh, why they would be your inspiration, and I can't help but notice, um, based on your demo reel, based on uh, based on <laughs> your current vocal talents as uh, showcased in this interview, you have a very deep masculine voice, and I'm sure you're able to um, come up with a bunch of ranges and characters using your vocal talents. Like, what's that like? What's your thought process for, okay, how am I going to change my voice to suit the character? Well, I mean, that's very flattering. I'd like more options to be able to do that. Hint, hint, audience. Um, but, like, for example, the character that I'm in something that is releasing tonight, and I'm fucking ecstatic about it. It's like my biggest role yet is so good. Um, but the character, he he's a real... Um, a uh, re real type B personality, a real, uh, 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 hmm. I don't like this word because it's been co-opted by some pretty shitty people, but he's a bit of a cuck, you follow? Yes. Like, not a literal cuck, but just like that, eh, uh, I don't know, uh, kind of personality, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I feel like it's very important to, like, find a reference, right? So I was reading his lines, and to me, have you played Fallout 4? I have indeed. To me, it really reminded me of um, Travis, the radio DJ, before you do that quest that makes him insufferable. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, that, I, mean I literally said to uh, the guy that had written it, uh, I'm like, hey, um, you, you just wrote Travis. And he's like, holy fuck, you're right. So, I mean, that was kind of, I think it's important to like think of a reference point, whether it's a real person or a fictional person, just something to think of and go off of. I see, I see. That's very true, very true. You always look to real life, you look to your past experiences for trying to create the new ones. <laughs> so, how did you get to know your fellow voice actors in the adult voice acting community on the Discord and whatnot? How did you find them? How did they find you? Well, um... I worked with a guy that Ivan also worked with. I don't know if this is how Ivan managed to find me or whatever but I for reference a, a sorry to interrupt for, for 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 reference sorry just for the audience he is speaking of ivan erection uh, i'll put something on the screen right now this is ivan erection very prominent adult voice actor head of the community head honcho uh you can go oh, follow him great. on twitter yes he is fantastic sorry for interrupting just gotta give the audience reference ivan erection go check him out please continue yeah, if, um, if you're putting his picture up and you're not demonetized yet, you probably will be. His picture is titties. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, so he just sent me a message on Twitter that was basically like, hey, man, you an adult voice actor? And I said, I'm sure trying to be. And he sent me a link to the Discord, and that's about it. So, I mean, I've been interacting with people then, which honestly... Um, until then, I mean, I didn't really know any kind of resources to get new jobs or network with people at all. Um, so my interactions with other people were like non-existent really. I mean, I don't want to say with other people, with other voice actors, with other cr content creators. Right. Um, however, if you want a little sneak peek behind the curtain, etc., that's kind of real life too. I don't really interact with people much, but you know. Well, I have to say, for someone who, uh, for someone who supposedly doesn't interact with people much, you are pretty well-versed, very skilled at doing such, I must say. Ah, uh, fear is a great motivator. <laughs> that's true! That's true! I gotta remember that when, uh, when in my uh, future attempts to conquer the world. That's good. That's a good, oh, uh, yeah, good thing yeah. to live by. Yes, yes. Uh, but uh, what uh, advice, what advice have uh, other voice actors in the community or just in general, like what advice have you taken from other voice actors to help improve yourself? Uh, I mean, a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, I've sent in... Like, I had an audition once with a southern accent. And as a person who, uh, um, I don't live quite as far north as you, but I don't hear southern accents a ton unless I go into rural areas, which, that's a whole nother topic. Um, I, you know, I sent in, I, you know, try to get feedback. It's all very iterative, the idea of, you know, expanding one's range, right? Uh, more to the point, more um, uh, uh, quantifiable, I guess, advice has been along the lines of um, platforms I should be on, you know? 
Uh, I was barely aware of Kofi as a thing. Kofi, you said? Rather. Yes. I was barely aware of Kofi as a thing. Um, I mean, I was on Twitter. Um, yeah, beforehand, I had just sent my demo reel to people. I didn't post it on YouTube because I'm a bit of what they call an idiot. Um, but, you know, it's, you know, people with loads more experience than you. And it's just, it's fascinating. And it's wonderful to be able to talk to them and hear what they experienced firsthand there was someone in the voice chat the other day who basically said do not use a specific platform because um of their issues with nsfw content i don't even remember the name of the platform if i'm honest but they recommended i use another one that's like for selling specific samples i mean i remember what the one they recommended was i don't remember the one that they told me not to use. not to use. fair enough i'm fair <laughs> i'm sure we'll get yelled at about it in the comments <laughs> oh sh I i'm not even gonna say who said it but uh their name starts with a letter. <laughs> yeah, it's oh. ruled out all of those number fuckers. <laughs> well, how far do you want to take this voice acting career? Is this your dream job? Is this what you want to do for the rest of your life? That's a fucking rabbit hole, brother. I <laughs> well, here's the short answer. I am in college right now. I am working on my undergraduate and my graduate degree in cyber forensics and data analytics. I may have just doxxed myself, but my point is, oh, and I have, I'm a fucking film miner because I like to waste time. Um, so my, the short answer is like, yes and no. I mean, like if I could do this full time, if I could make a living off of this, that'd be the fucking dream, but I would be fucking pissed if I just wasted, you know, a hundred thousand, 120,000, whatever it ends up being dollars on a useless piece of paper. Fair enough. So, short answer is, at least for right now, this is the fucking dream. Later on, probably still will be. I'll just be filled with angst. Ah. <laughs> 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 oh. Ah. Oh. All right, then. All right. Woo. Um, to expand on that question what is your dream role what like are there any specific characters are there any specific movies or hentai or video games you want to star in what's your dream role as a voice actor um i mean the short answer is like acting in general the ideal thing would be film um i love voice acting i think it's great but uh um i don't know my issue with theater right is the lack of permanence and my uh uh issue with voice acting is that there's a disconnect from the people that you're acting with, right? So film would be the ideal situation for me, right? As for voice acting, um, video games all the way. I don't have a specific one in mind, but uh, I tell you what, I would love to work with, I don't, do you know who um, Yahtzee Croshaw is? I do indeed. Yeah, he, uh, almost everything he does is basically entirely solo, so I don't know if that's a feasible thing, but goodness me, his, um, uh, uh, specifically his uh, Chizo, let me try again, Chizo Mythos, or, um, uh, uh, well, he says Chizo Mythos, but I assume that's like a, an English thing. Anyway, um, that was so influential for me for um, just creative fiction, you know, uh, writing. Oh, my goodness. That and uh, Lovecraft, but, you know, he's a bit of uh, not someone I would bring up in 2019 much. Uh, so being able to work with him would be the absolute dream, if I'm honest. Of course, that would not be a uh, NSFW project, I would imagine. <laughs> probably, probably. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you for, uh, for uh, letting us get to understand you and know you as a voice actor, Chekhov. But now, let's ask some personal questions and get to know you, well, for you. So let's start off Ooh. with, uh, yeah, yeah, you. So let's start off oh! with, Jesus. <laughs> So let's start off with something basic. What are some of your favorite movies? Favorite movie genres? Oh my goodness. Oh, I tell you what. I Horror comedy is a genre that does not exist enough. Okay? Stuart Gordon did this world a service with anything he fucking put on this planet. Reanimator is one of the tops. But as for favorite, I would probably go with... Now, personally, I can't come unless I'm t dreadfully sad. Like horrifyingly sad so eternal sunshine on the spotless mind i would probably call my uh favorite movie but uh the movie that i rewatched the most is uh i feel like a bit of a fuckboy answer but it's fight club because i feel like that movie is just so so visceral and just brad pitt fucking kills it edward norton's fantastic helena bonham carter oh my goodness the whole cast is amazing meatloaf's in it um 
and and just like the thing that I like about that is uh, spoiler alert for a twenty or thirty no twenty yeah twenty year old movie. Uh, there's a big plot twist, and everything before the plot twist makes sense whether you know it or not. It just means something different. Like every conversation the characters have. Um, takes on an entirely different meaning, whether the plot twist has happened yet or not. And I just think the attention to detail is beautiful. Well, they don't make movies like Fight Club anymore. The, that was a special kind of movie. Those kinds of movies I mean, where they're there to take you on a journey. They're not just there to get you in the sea, get your money, and then, then leave. Like, it's there to stay with you. You know what I mean? I mean, I just want to emphasize, they didn't fucking make movies like Fight Club then. Like, <laughs> they wanted to get it banned. They said it was too violent. Oh, shit. And then the studio... Yeah, the studio's response was basically, this is no more violent than, I don't know, would have been contemporary, like, war films and stuff. Because it's like, it's not that it's, like, physically violent, it's just that it's so confrontational. Like, as a piece. Mm. There's actually, um, th that whole, the whole story of that movie is basically um, meeting opposition with more opposition really uh have you read the book at all i have not read the book unfortunately uh i would recommend it but uh there's a line where so tyler and marla have sex not really a spoiler alert um <laughs> marla says the line um i want you to have my abortion in the movie um the reason that she says that is that in the book she says i want wait no i haven't been, hmm, I'm trying to remember the exact wording I haven't been fucked like that since grade school. That was it. Um, so she said that, and they're like, you got to get the line. And so they said, uh, uh, um, I want you to have my abortion. And they stopped making requests for edits because they're like, that's still very, very bad. <laughs> but the movie just, oh, it's very in your face in a visceral way. I love it. <laughs> Are there any other films like Fight Club that have affected you in that way that you have a personal connection to? Oh, again, you know, as a film miner, I can give you some fucking bog standard answers. I could be like, hey, man, you know, Darren Aronofsky's pie really stuck with me, which like it did. But I just feel like that's cliche. Um, pie. Uh, are you familiar with it? Yes. Yes. Oh, goodness. I'd recommend that one. Um, oh, pff. But then we also had to watch shit like uh, like ten minute movies about nothing, like Unshion Andalou, which is like engaging for a minute, and then it's Unshion Andalou. If you're not familiar, is the movie where um, the opening scene is a woman getting her eye sliced open. Um, Jesus, fuck! And then it's just people fucking about town. Yeah, uh, my professor at the time, whenever I saw that, which probably would have been a year or two ago, said something like. And now, you all have seen the most violently an audience has ever been attacked by an image. Wait, what? And I said, yeah, I tend to agree. <laughs> That's how he described the scene where... I'll, I'll send you the scene later if you want to put it... No, no, I'm good, I'm good. No, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. Thank you, thank you. I'm good, me, I'm good. Let me, <laughs> let me give you a little bit of context on the scene. So basically, it's supposed to be a surrealist piece. It actually had um, Salvador Dali, which is like king shit of fuck mountain when it comes to surrealism. <laughs> He, uh, um, it had Salvador Dali attached, and they were trying to bring the surrealism across in film, which at the time hadn't been done before, because this was, you know, basically people were just excited to see a light move on the screen. Uh, um, but anyway, so what happens is it's a woman that walks into a barber shop, and they want to emphasize that it's a very calm, very realistic, like how a woman just walks into a barber shop. She sits in the chair, but instead of like doing her hair, he puts his hand over her, um, like one finger on her eyebrow and one on her lower lid spreads her eyelid open and then takes a straight razor and slices across her eye but right before he does it the camera cuts to a picture of a pig's eye being cut open Ooh. so it gets real visceral and it's like a literal eye being cut open yeah it was not okay <laughs> <laughs> but uh Anshion andalou is like one of the big ones that they make you do in film classes one of the earliest ones it's like that and citizen kane Oh, yes, Citizen Kane, Citizen Kane, of course, of course. See, I was fine with Citizen Kane, but I'm not fine with having to watch it in, like, five different classes. <laughs> yeah, it's a good movie, but I can understand getting sick of it if you're watching it back to back to back. <laughs> 
Oh goodness, yeah. And especially because it's a minor, so like basically, I'm just taking a, a, a streamlined approach to all these fucking movies. But yeah, um, that uh, David Lynch, I think, is an interesting one. Where David Lynch, I think, I like thematically more than I actually like his shit. Like, um, a Razorhead, I thought was like really good with the theming and the setup, but as a movie, I was like, eh. Um, same with I, I actually own Mahalan Drive, and I haven't watched it yet, which is the description of a lot of movies I own because I worked at a thrift store for a while. So I basically just bought every DVD. Um, and I've watched most of them, I guess. But yeah, uh, I would say that David Lynch is one that I like what he does. I like thematically what he's going for. I just think in execution, it kind of fails. Darren Aronofsky, I already mentioned fucking nothing gets me harder. Um, like, oh my goodness, we watched uh, in one film class I had, it was like a five-hour class, so um, we watched Pi, and then we watched um, uh, um, Black Swan, back-to-back. -back. People left that room not okay. I can imagine! I can imagine! Because, like, Pi ends with someone drilling into their own head, right? Black Swan starts with Natalie Portman tearing her skin off. But, I mean, that's kind of like my, my whole thing, right, is um, I like the, the, the dark comedies. I like, like Reanimator, for example. I enjoy those. I rewatch um, basically anything Stuart Gordon did all the time. Um, but for me to, like, really be affected by a movie, for it really to, like, hit me, um, I want to feel like it hit me in, like, my emotion testicles. Like, I want to feel like I am ready to fucking ball. Hmm. All right. Like, basically, if a character doesn't die, I'm still flaccid. <laughs> All right. All right. That leads me into a very interesting question. What to you is the most important aspect of film? The quality of the writing or how it makes you feel? Ooh. Ooh. That's a fucking spicy question. I like that question. Ha, 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 ha. Um, well, I mean, I think the, the, the shortest answer is just, well, how it makes you feel, right? But, um, like, now, I'll start with this. I hate the term objectively good or objectively bad because it's nonsense, okay? Oh, dear. Because good and bad are inherently opinionated words and objectively means without opinion. Come at me, grammar boys. Anyway, <laughs> um, but if, if you're going to you know, I'll put it this way. If you're going to guess as to how well a movie will do at like awards shows and shit, um, the obvious answer is the writing because how it makes you feel is so personal, right? But how it makes you feel being so personal is why it matters more to me. If I, cause I don't give a fuck about like the Oscars or something, but like eternal sunshine of the spotless mind makes me want to fucking ball my eyes out. So I'll watch it on loop. But, I mean, it goes to, here, here. Uh, have you read Perks of Being a Wallflower? No, I have not, unfortunately. Okay, as an adult, I probably wouldn't recommend it. I read it as a 14-year-old, which I think was the perfect fucking time. Because if I read it now, I would just be like, why do all these characters suck? Everyone's whining. I don't give a fuck about any of you. At the time, I'm like, I suck. I whine. I'm a little bitch boy, because that's what happens whenever you're 14. Um. I was going to say no offense to any 14-year-olds in the audience, but uh, they shouldn't be watching this video. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, so how it affects you can change not only from person to person, but from moment to moment. So to me, how it affects you is so important because it's so uh, 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 w w effervescent. I don't know what the fuck. Tr transcendent. It's so in the moment. It's so temporary. And I think that's fucking awesome. Like, the first time I watched Fight Club, I was in a very different uh, point in my life. And now, if I watch Fight Club, I still fucking love it, but I have a different appreciation, right? Like, for one, I feel like I relate to the narrator less now than I did then, which I think says more about me than it does about that movie. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, the shortest point of it is that entertainment is a reflection on humanity, not only those who create it, but those who consume it hmm okay but i have to i have to backtrack a bit to what you said earlier 
Um, so you're, you're not a fan of objectively good or objectively bad. You're not a fan of these terms. So I have to ask, is any... is No, I fucking hate those terms. Okay, then I have to ask, are there any... If that's the case, are there any actually good or bad movies? Can we call movies good or bad if nothing's objective? You can say good or bad. Objectively bad, objectively good is where I draw the line. Here, let me give you a fucking extreme example, okay? Prepare your butthole for this. All right. uh, oh, okay. So let's say uh, real dramatic... Um, Lowering your pulse. Can that be objectively good or bad? If you're having an anxiety attack, it's fucking ideal. If you're uh, uh, having hypothermia, it kills you, you know? Um, and I think this, in, uh, this is only an exercise to show the idea that objectively good and objectively bad don't work because good and objective, right, are at odds. One is saying, without opinion, one is an opinion. Two hours later. Now, I've, I've derailed the interview a bit, so we're going to get back to asking questions, getting to know you, but I think that was some excellent insight into your thought process, your creative process, and, and your beliefs. That's just, god damn. We're going to have to do a debate. Yeah. We're going to have to do a debate about this sometime. We're going to have to do, like, uh, confirming now, I'm going to do another interview or debate with you in the future about objectivity and subjectivity in art, because, oh, man, that's so fascinating to me. I love this. I love this. Ah, but... I mean, hey, you may well be able to convince me that I'm entirely wrong, because, again, as I mentioned, I'm not an English major. <laughs> oh, neither am I. I'm just some nerd from Canada. <laughs> Damn, that's the dream. <laughs> Canada. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty nice here. Okay, so, moving on from film, what about video games? What are some of your favorite video games? Why do you love video games? Well, I already mentioned Yahtzee Croshaw, our lord and savior. Of but, course. Uh, um, he did a series of point-and-click adventures that I fucking loved, and it actually really got me interested in point-and-click adventures. Uh, so I played a ton of those because I'm 90. Uh, you know, Sierra and LucasArts are the big ones, but, you know, there's like Delphine did some as well. More... Uh, exciting i would say is i fucking love old school like first person shooters uh duke nukem uh, uh duke nukem 3d i got it on the xbox actually um because i thought that sounded weird but now i realize i hate playing it on a controller um <laughs> but anyway uh duke nukem 3d i fucking love it i tell you what they just re-released um blood oh yeah with the subtitle fresh supply oh my god i've been playing that shit constantly i fucking love that <laughs> Um, and I, I think it's just because, uh, you know, I will say that generally FPSs are not in line with what I normally like about a video game. FPSs are, uh, the, you're moving around at the land. Well, these kind of FPSs, more modern ones are a bit more realistic, but you're moving around at the land speed record. Uh, shit's going crazy. Everything's uh projectile. So it's just circle scraping. And basically, uh, you know, I can only get so erect, right? <laughs> but normally, <laughs> With most genres, right, that's really what I hate about video games is uh, the disconnect of, you know, being so gameplay focused and having a non-existent story. I mean, Doom's story, for a, a mm. good example, was remarkably complex originally. Um, if you read the um, Project Bible, they had different um, characters and everything. In the end, it was just, you're on Mars, kill those things in front of you, go to the next level. And honestly... That fucking works for Doom's gameplay. That's fucking awesome. Like, I wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> um, but it, so FPSs are the big exception, but normally I want a much more heavily gameplay focused uh, thing. That's why, you know, I love the Telltale games. Um, I tell you, one that I think uh, really blends them really well is, and I'm going to sound like I'm 90. I want to let everyone know that I'm barely old enough to drink. Um, <laughs> but, um, one that really, I think, blended gameplay and story very well is um, uh, the first two Thief games. Oh, yes! Yes! Oh! oh. Fantastic. I would also say, like, some of the best stealth games I've played at all. Um, the map design, phenomenal. Felt very real, very lived in, right? Which was their whole goal. But more to the point is... Even just the mission structure. One thing that really struck me about those is that... Um, Garrett, the main character, he doesn't care about either of the factions, and depending on the games, he's going to side a little bit with one or the other. But even just who you're working for, you just the character comes across so well in the fact that he doesn't care. 
and the gameplay, you know, uh, bringing across, you know, he's got a prosthetic eye, bring that across in gameplay with being able to zoom in because it's a robot eye. Um, the, the stealth is fantastic. The gameplay is great. And, oh, some of the fucking innovative stuff, like having arrows that shoot moss on the floor so it deadens your footsteps or shooting arrows that make noise. Oh, my goodness. Basically, I'm just going to nut over the Thief games for a minute. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I would say that Thief uh, very, very effectively, and Thief 2, um, incorporated the setting and the story into the gameplay. And that's a thing I really appreciate. Um, with most games. I mean, most of the games I play are much more heavily narrative uh, focused. Like I mentioned, I played a ton of point and clicks. I played Life is Strange, and I have such mixed thoughts about Life is Strange. Ooh. Uh, oh, you got some thoughts on Life is Strange? Oh, it's one of my favorite games, but please continue. I'm interested to hear what you say. Well, the simplest fact is right. I fucking love the detail to the story. I love the branching dialogue. I love how they did the romance options because they were basically non-existent. Oh my goodness. I feel like most time you see a romance in a game, it's the Harvest Moon route where it's like, I'm going to throw something at you until you kiss me. And that one, it was like, you can hang out with two different characters. And even then, it's not like a big deal if you romance them, which I think is fucking primo. On the other hand, I just don't like a high school setting. And I feel like this is mostly because I'm barely out of high school. But, uh... I just think a high school setting is very uh, is very underwhelming to me. Hmm, interesting. But I, interesting. But I thought the, the the now here's here's a thought. Going back to incorporating story and gameplay, the rewind mechanic in the first Life is Strange because I did play both. Um, I have mixed thoughts on that because right, a point and click, specifically a more decision focused one like that, is based on making decisions and you know, suffering the consequences. But a rewind mechanic means that it doesn't fucking matter. Now, there are times where they took it away, but, like, I don't know. You see my point? Uh, to an extent, to an extent, but uh, going into the context of the game, like the specific decisions you get to rewind, you only get to rewind once, and then you're stuck with the decision. You, like, you can, you can rewind in Is that... that right? Yeah, you can rewind in that moment as many times as you want, but as soon as you make the decision... And leave oh, the yeah, area yeah. where you're making the decision. Like then you have to live with it. So it's it's more so a battle of uh, battle of thoughts, a battle of uh, a battle of wills. Like which what what uh, what's best for the characters around me? What's best for me? That sort of thing. So it's uh, like I like how the game in those moments made you debate with yourself, really debate those choices because you got to see the immediate qu consequences and then rewind. But eventually you would have to pick one and live with it. I tell you what. The two absolute fucking best parts in that game, just because I want to nerd about this for a second, are when you're talking the girl off the ledge. Oh. Holy fuck, that was cool. Ooh, yeah, intense. Um, because because the, the game does build up this idea of, well, if I fuck up, I'll rewind. And because you've had that expectation, that moment is so much more tense because you can't rewind. The second that I think is so fucking good is... Um, the hallucinations, any of the hallucinations, or at the end, whenever you're doing fucking jumping into the future and then the, the past of the future and the hypothetical future of that, so fuck good. <laughs> so you, you see, the theme here is anything where I'm not in the fucking high school. <laughs> I'll be on I'll be on top of the high school for all I care. I don't actually know if it was a high school or like a boarding school or what the situation was. Oh, it was high school. It was high school. It was a high school. All right. <laughs> it, was, it was a fancy, fancy prep uh, high school, though. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I know. I, I remember seeing Zoe 101 whenever I was a youngster quite a bit and thinking that that was a college. But then her like 11 year old brother was there. And then I found out it was a boarding school and I just didn't know what a boarding school was. I never read Harry Potter. So there was that. <laughs> oh, man. That's fascinating. That's fascinating, man. I know my fans are going to be freaking out. That you love Fief, and yeah, then this conversation with Life is Strange. Oh, this is great. This is great. This is great. This interview is so great. You're so great. Ah, oh, this is so great. Okay. I mean, if, hey, hey, if people want to say that it's cool that I like things that they like, that's one thing. But what I want is them to tell me I'm wrong. I want to <laughs> fight you on it. I want you to tell me that I'm fucking wrong so I can tell you you're fucking wrong. <laughs> oh, it's going to happen. Don't you worry. It's going to happen. I, I want to emphasize, that's not about video games. That's not about movies. That's about anything in life at all. I feel like I'm a very, I'm not a very opinionated person in real life. Um, like so many things, I just do not care. So uh, I frequently will just take the opposite side of whoever I'm talking to. 
Oh just shit! Because I wait, want, wait. I if someone, that if someone else, if someone else was interviewing right now, interviewing you right now, will you be giving the opposite answers? No, no. I'm not talking about an interview. I'm talking like if someone's telling me that they think something's trash, or they think something's great. Normally, I'll just take the opposite side because I normally don't care, but I want that conflict. <laughs> See, we're not. This isn't conflict. This is a back and forth. We're chilling, right? Like, uh, a little bit with the subjective and the objective thing, but I told you my opinion before you told me yours. So, <laughs> oh, but I didn't even tell you my opinion though. Oh, 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 fuck! <laughs> <laughs> you okay there, buddy? Bamboozled. Indeed, indeed. Don't underestimate the Canadian. <laughs> That's how they get you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, moving on from the uh, the more personal questions to get to know you, how about some silly bullshit questions? You up for that? Always. All right. How? Well, I don't know. Well, I feel like this is going to be the last section, and I'll miss no, it. No, no, there's another section. There's another section. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Calm good. your All titties. Right. Calm your titties. Now, so... I, mean, eh, I don't know about that. <laughs> They can only get so calm. <laughs> so, how would you survive a bird apocalypse? Context, the birds are fed up with humanity. The movie Birds is happening right now. Bo- birds are trying to wipe us out. How would you survive a bird apocalypse? Are you familiar with, well, I think it was called Bird Apocalypse. was a, um, a movie with just horrible CGI. Anyway, that's a side note. But I thought that's where you are going, not like an actually decent movie. Um... <laughs> Uh, well, the short answer is, and this might be a little advanced for some of your uh, uh, less apocalypse-inclined listeners, ah. is I would stay inside. Oh, you think your house could hold against a horde of birds? Uh, you think that they're going to fucking burrow? They got beaks. <laughs> Not even if they... I'll s- just fucking put something in front of the window, and then I'll play some fucking doom. I don't know. Uh, you're gonna run out of groceries eventually. You're going to need to go out and get food. Oh, will I? Because you just told me that my the side of my wall is going to be full of birds. Oh shit! You're gonna. <laughs> you plan? I will eat the birds. I will become one above the birds. The birds will see me as a god, and that is how I will survive. All right. All right, solid answer. Solid answer. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to wear a necklace with seven beaks on it. <laughs> One from each type of bird. There's only seven types of birds after I'm done with them. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. If you discovered the lost city of Atlantis, what would you like it to be? Like, say you found this lost city of Atlantis. On land. <laughs> If you found the lost city of Atlantis, how would you? How, what would be your dream version of Atlantis? Like, would it be full uh, of hot chicks? Would the architecture be made of jello? I don't know. Like, w- what's your ideal Atlantis that you'd discover? Uh, well, the first, the first thing, very important, um, public Wi-Fi. Uh, <laughs> second thing is, gotta be toilets. I don't know if they're underwater. I imagine the toilet situation gets weird if you're underwater. But I know that if I'm going on a fucking expedition, by the time I get there, I'm probably going to have to pee, you know? Someone's going to be like, you should have went before you gone. I would have been like, oh, well, I didn't have to go then. Got to have toilets. This is a big two. Secondly, as I mentioned, uh, I quite like, I don't want to say I like Lovecraft, but I like things that he's written. You follow? You know, maybe he should have named his cat a different thing. That's a fun Google. But anyway, <laughs> um, so I... Where be aliens? Give me some fucking aliens. Give me some cosmic horror. Tear some shit up. Tell me that, you know, uh, the days are numbered, you know? Uh, I guess. I guess I know. V- very curious, though, why you'd want that in your in your ideal Atlantis, but uh, I'll get behind it. <laughs> well, well, I mean, look, if we find Atlantis, right, and there's just some fucking people on it, neat, I guess. But if it's like... <laughs> existential dread oh my goodness <laughs> i'd like to reiterate can only get so erect <laughs> all right all right all right so so what is there any memes are there any memes online that you would love to just eviscerate that you'd love to see removed from all existence any memes you hate you know i've seen the modified uh interview and I feel like this might drive a wedge. 
honestly, I feel like fucking most of them. I feel like there's so many fucking trash ones. Oh. Because here, so many of them are thing I should not like, thing I do like, me. The one where they're fucking turning onto the exit too late, the Kanye one, the guy with his girlfriend. So fucking many are just the same format with a different thing. And then there's the ones that I just think are fucking dumb. Um, uh, the the uh, had to do it to him. Oh my god, what a fucking nonsense piece of garbage. Basically, when I said I feel like people are gonna think I'm ninety, this is why. <laughs> oh man, are there any memes that you do like? Well, here's the simple answer to that: unique ones. I don't like meme formats. Give me something unique. Oh, such as, come on, give me an example. I, I'm literally talking about like something that someone made for a specific thing. Um, I can fucking look through my phone, but I don't save a lot of memes, believe it or not. There's one that I, there's one that I throw in Discord a lot. Um, I don't think I've thrown it in the voice actor Discord a bunch, but um, it's just, it's from a picture where someone said something like, when you, when you look at her Instagram post from a year ago but you don't click it or you don't like anything and it's a like a sherlock holmes looking motherfucker holding the magnifying glass up to his eye and in rainbow letters it says professional spy that's one i use a lot okay okay i can i can see why that'd be funny i can see why that'd be funny <laughs> but yeah my point is here i mean i can fucking send you some here here's a really good one it's um uh, it's BDSM, but as a Venn diagram. And under B and D, it says bondage and discipline. Under S and M, it says sadism and masochism. And then under D and S, it says dark souls. <laughs> and then someone edited it to replace uh, DS with uh, the Nintendo DS. Oh, and then geez. someone edited it again to replace. So it's B and D is bondage and discipline. DS is nintendo ds and then sm is super mario oh <laughs> and then the final edit is someone replacing the b and d with blu-ray disc <laughs> see like that shit that's creative that's the shit i like i don't want to look at another meme that's fucking thing i like thing i should like me boring fair enough fair enough now seeing as how your icon is a pistol I'm curious, do you have any favorite firearms? Any favorite firearms? Well, if I'm honest, I live in a dormitory. I don't own any firearms. Well, that doesn't mean you can't be a uh, fan of guns. <laughs> um, honestly, I don't really... It's not a thing that I consider much. I will say, I mean, I've gone hunting before. Uh, I enjoy shooting... Uh, um, I, I enjoy trap shooting, but I feel like with your audience, that might mean a different thing. <laughs> Um, but but also the other term people use is skeet shooting and i think that's worse so um clay pigeons we'll just say clay pigeons i like shooting clay pigeons okay um okay my dad actually has a uh, um, 50 caliber handgun which i fired a few times but 50 calibers should not be in a handgun that's fucking ridiculous um we were shooting like fruit the one day and we were using 22, so I didn't bring hearing protection. And a friend of mine had my dad's gun, and with with my dad's permission, I don't want to say that he just fucking stole my dad's gun. Um, and he's like, "Do you want to fire the 50 caliber?" And I said, "I mean, I didn't bring any fucking hearing protection. I'm gonna go deaf if I fire that." And he said, "I mean, so?" And I'm like, "What do you mean, so?" Just let me use yours while I'm shooting it, and I'll let you sh uh, wear them while you're shooting it. And he says, man, I don't know, sharing hearing protection? That sounds kind of gay. And I said, <laughs> it gets worse. And I was like, so what would you recommend we do? And he said, well, how about I keep mine in, because they're mine, and then whenever you're shooting, I'll just stick my fingers in your ear. And I said, so... Sharing hearing protection, super gay. But you putting your fingers inside my body, not gay? <laughs> so then he gave me the hearing protection. <laughs> oh, that's but great. Yeah, so I, I mean, like, I've enjoyed specific guns. I would say in general, I'm not terribly uh, particular. M1 Garands are interesting just because it's more powerful than it looks like. Um, 
And also, I just appreciate the history there. Like, whenever you get into old guns, it just gets fascinating. You know? Oh, yes, um, yes. Oh, my goodness. Uh, just the evolution of technology. One of my absolute favorite bits, right, is... um. So in high school, we had someone brought in their great grandfather who was a World War II veteran, right? Um, and he talked about World War II, and it got very depressing, obviously. I don't know where they thought that was going to go. Um, but one thing that he said that really stuck with me because it had never occurred to me before was he said that his generation to us is the same as what Civil War veterans were to his, which checks out if you. Um, like do the math on it because the American civil war was in the uh, 1860s. So we're talking what, like around about 80 years. So it's almost exactly, um, uh, between, um, the sixties and the forties. Uh, it's almost exactly the same going from one to one. And it just, it never occurred to me how close there were because during world war one, there was such a fucking leap in technology. Like you compare, um, a civil war era sharp, to uh like even a fucking handgun from the second world war and it it is night and day one is like borderline a weapon from halo compared to the other i don't know maybe i'm rambling what do you think nah no man, that's fast it's fascinating it really is fascinating i agree i agree yeah. like like the history of some of these weapons and the technology and how they came to be the minds behind them it's 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 a uh, it's special it's special I, yeah, I think it's very fascinating, but I mean, I can't rattle you off like model names or anything. Oh, not, neither can I, man. Neither can I. Well, now we come to the final part of the interview. This is a special bit I like to do with everybody. Now you get to ask me questions. Can be as serious or as stupid as you like. Hit me. Okay, so honestly, the other day I was at work, which tonight's the last day at work, so oh yeah. But uh, yesterday I was at work and I was like, He's going to ask me that question. I should prepare something. And then I didn't. <laughs> uh, so, hmm. well, let me, let me uh, t turn around a question that you'd ask me. What do you think? Uh, is this what you want to be doing? This kind of thing? Like, what do you want to be doing? You said that you um, uh, put in bathtubs. Now, do you want to put in bathtubs? Do you ba feel like bathrooms? Bathroom, bathrooms. I don't. It's not just solely bathtubs, you nimrod. <laughs> so, but but you do put in bathtubs, don't you? Yes, it's part of making the whole bathroom. I there do the, you go. I do the floor. I do the walls. I do the sink. We take the we tear the whole thing out and put new stuff in. Like, it's not just solely but the bathtub. But does that call to you? No. Are you called by the bathroom? Do you feel nature's call? No. <laughs> Maybe later today, but not right now. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> but, well, like, uh, do I want to do renovations and YouTube for the rest of my life? Hell no. Hell, Hell no. no. That's what I like to hear, because we shouldn't be content ever. Always move forward. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do with your life? Well, here's the thing. Uh, 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 beforehand, I wanted to really get into video game development, but I'm too incompetent to, like, be a video game developer, so I thought, hey, at least getting a job at one of these uh, video game studios as, like, community manager, I'd be content. Like, at least I'm I'm interacting with video games, or I'm part of video games, because I love this hobby, I, it's, a, it's a passion of mine, but... After meeting Pixie Willow and joining the uh, Adult Voice Actors Discord and meeting all of you and doing these interviews... I'm kind of, like, reconsidering things. Like, I've been... Some of you have been pushing me and saying, oh, you should get into voice acting. And I've been... Uh, I mean, I think you fucking have the voice for it. You uh, you got a very, like, super villain voice in a way that I fucking love. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So I, I'm starting to consider voice acting, but again, I love helping people. I love uplifting people who are better than me, and all of you are better than me, so I want to try and uplift all of you. So I'm thinking maybe a talent... I mean, hey, I'm man, starting to think maybe... double-digit Twitter. <laughs> I mean, I'm start thinking like becoming like a talent agent or a marketer, just s s something, a, a charity, starting up a charity organization, a, mar a marketing organization. I I don't know. Just doing some. I just want to help people. I want to help people, and I want to try. I don't know. I don't know. Like I I I'm I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted. I like I don't want to do this forever, but I want to do something that has something to do with what I love, and I love helping people. I want to try and help you in your profession, like. Like, uh, you, you, what you all do is so underappreciated, and you get so much shit for it, and, they, like, there's so many complications and weirdos. I, mean, I was and very fucking aware of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, 
definitely, I don't, like this. I don't want to do this forever. I uh, but uh, the future, the future, well, we'll see. Like, it, like I have to put things into perspective. Oh, I have to put things into perspective. We have to make sacrifices for the sake of our, our living and our friends and family. So we will see. We will see. I'm not as sure. I'm not as sure as what I want to do as before. But uh, we will see. I, I don't plan on doing this forever. That like personally, I don't plan on doing this forever. Do it as long as I can within within my limits, within reason. But yeah. I hope that answers right. your question. Well, let's let's do let's do a similar question. All right. All right. Uh, you're on your deathbed. Maybe I don't know when. Maybe whenever. Right. And what do you think in your final moments is the defining thing that you think is either I have succeeded or I have failed? What is the one thing that changes that balance? What is your one aspiration? Your biggest aspiration? Who? World domination. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> yeah, I got nothing else to add. World domination. World domination is a good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Come on, hit me with another. Another one. All right, another one. <laughs> um, would you still be interested in a video game development? And if so, would you, you know, aside from uh, uh, marketing, community relations, because you've already mentioned that, what would interest you about it? Would it be the writing? Would it be the acting? Would it be the, the, the developing? The, 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 well, I guess it's all developing, but would it be the, the programming? You follow me? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I, I know it's far-fetched, never going to happen. Oh, well, yeah, never say never. Uh, but uh, just overall director, creative director. Oh, you want to be the fucking big boy. Damn right. <laughs> I have so many uh, <laughs> ideas and like managing a team. I think I, I can do all right at managing a team. I think I can manage a team okay. I'll take your word for it. I've never worked in a team with you. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Good point. Uh, yes. Uh, here's a question. Does Canada have social security? Uh, yes, but also no. It depends right, on the pro up. It depends on the province. Follow up. What is your social security number? Oh, good question. Good question. I'll, <laughs> I'll DM it to you. I'll DM oh, it to okay, you. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Um, all right, so a real question, a real question would be, what would you say that your proudest accomplishment is up to this point, right now? Hmm, proudest accomplishment. Does it, uh, does it have to be, like, on the internet or just in life in general? Literally anything. You could say the, the birth of your newborn baby girl. Hmm. Hmm, oh, that's actually a good question. That's a, shit, that's actually a really tough question. Uh, what am I most proud Thanks, of I right now? I was asked it once. <laughs> I was, what am I most proud of right now? Huh. Huh. What am I most proud of? I asked you first. I, I know, I know, I'm asking. <laughs> oh, God. Shoot, I think this is the first time on an interview that I'm going to have to say pass because I, I, I know, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I just can't think of it right now. Like, like, I've been on this planet for 23 years. There's a lot to comb over. Hey, man, you, you got two years on me. But anyway, all right, hear me out. I think that you just gave, ready for this, the best possible answer. Because our proudest moments should always be in our future. We should always be working towards our proudest, not wallowing in the past. We shouldn't dwell. We always move forward. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you. Bravo. Yes. It's okay. I'll be here all week. <laughs> yeah, I won't be. I have to move later today. But anyway. <laughs> All right, one more. Hit me with one more. All right, one more is um, what's your what's your ideal family life? You know, how many how many people do you want to live in a house with? How many people are spouses, significant others, children, roommates? Take your pick. Mm. What's your ideal family? Okay, wife, child, maybe two kids, maybe two kids. It depends on it. Really, now you're will... saying a child and two kids? No. <sighs> For fuck's sakes. I'm sorry. All right. So, what, okay, uh, a wife and maybe one or two kids, the, uh, one or two kids, depending on the financial situation, because I don't want, I don't want, last thing I want for my children to suffer because we literally can't afford, like, a, a house that fits that many people, can afford enough food. Like, I, I know maybe I'm being uh, too dark or too illogical, irrational. Um, it's, a, it's a real concept. It's a real fear. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's an important fear. 
I, I, I like being that that that's my that's my uh that's my end goal. Like the thing I have to do before I die is be a a, a husband and a father. That's that's what I so we want most in life. Proactively answer the previous question. No, you asked me before what I'm most proud of in life. Oh yeah, I guess the uh, hmm. The deathbed <laughs> one, right? Oh, uh, the deathbed. Um, well, I well I don't know. I won't know if that's my the like the uh my uh most proudest moment until well it's happened or I'm dying. So. <laughs> Our pride is in our future. Yes. Yes. Um, okay, so here, here's the real lightning round. Ready? Okay. Okay. Not, not now. In your ideal family. Got a dog? It would depend on what the uh, the wife and child would want. If they want a Got pet, a if they, uh, <laughs> if they want it, if they want it, I'd be, more, like, I've, I've had a pet before. Uh, I, I had a cat before, like, oh, she was such a sweetheart. I, I do love animals. So I'd be happy to have a pet in the family. Absolutely. That's fair. My girlfriend has four cats. One day I asked her, how many cats does she think is too many? She said, four. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah, she, uh, it's too many. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about, what about like a fish? What if, you, uh, you know, mm. you wouldn't want just a fish? I, I, I'd, I'd be good with a fish too. Uh, if I'm being honest, fish are fish are kind of boring, and fish don't really reciproc- reciprocate the love and affection quite like cats and dogs. Well, you just gotta you gotta corner him in the tank and give him a little pet. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the same thing, but I'll take your word for it. So if you, if the government of Canada bashed on your door, they kicked in your door. They're like, I don't know what your real name is, John. We'll say because it's a Ryan. My word. name is Ryan. You can call me Ryan, nerd. I did know it was Ryan. Fuck. <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, they knock on your door. They're like they're like Ryan. Anderson, that's your name now. Um, they're like, you get a fish. And they're like, they got a gun to your head. They're pinning you down. Jesus they're like, seizing your belongings. They're like, we're taking all this unless you decide on what kind of fish you want. Oh, jeez. You got to get a fish. Okay. Government mandated okay, fish. Okay, okay. Got to get a government mandated <laughs> fish. All right. Hmm. Any fish. Could be a fucking whale shark for all I care. I'm not. Not a whale because that's not a fish. <laughs> it's a mammal. Very true. Uh, hmm. What type of fish? What type of fish? Hmm. Uh. Hmm. I'm. Oh man, that's a good question. That is a good question. I. I wouldn't say goldfish because goldfish is too cliched. Goldfish is too cliched. I'm trying to think of different. Eh. Fuck it. Let's be dangerous and interesting. Piranha. I'd have a piranha. Piranha is a good answer. Piranha is a good answer. I don't think I've ever seen one piranha. You normally see them in like fucking flocks. Yeah. Yeah. Or schools. Pods. I think pods are like dolphins and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah. You'd go with the piranha? Yeah, yeah I'd yeah. probably go with something that's like... Well, actually, what am I saying? Does an octopus count as a fish? Because if... No! Yes, octopus all the fucking no! Way. Octopus is not a fish! Damn. It's a, the, cephal- it's a cephal- <laughs> It's a cephalopod. A cephalopod is a type of mollusk. <sighs> uh, shit. You're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, well, then I, I'd have to do it so- something colorful. Something badass. Uh, hmm... I guess lionfish is the most, like, colorful, badass thing I can think of. That's cool, too. Wait, does an eel count as a fish? Eels are fish. I looked this up recently because someone asked me what the difference was between a sea serpent and an eel, and I said, fuck if I know. (laughs) I look like a fucking fish doctor? Fuck you. (laughs) Um, But yeah, apparently eels are fish. Yeah, okay, yeah. So yeah, that's fair. Moray eels. I don't know if you've ever seen them eat something, but a moray, you know the mouth that the aliens had in Alien? Yep, they got that. Yep. They got that. It's fucking horrifying. Yep, yep. So yeah, eel is a good answer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, yeah, pff, that's all I got. I, I asked you about your fucking government-mandated fish. What's up? All right. <laughs> Well, this has been a phenomenal interview. Check uh, check off. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me. If people want to go out and support you and check out your stuff and hire you, where do they have to go? Uh, well, the obvious one is Twitter. You can hit me up at Checkoff Stuff. I am sure it'll be in the description if uh, uh, Gamertron's a real cool guy. <laughs> um, uh, also, I just set up a, a Ko-Fi, uh, uh, which we had a whole conversation about how that should be pronounced. Um, if you want to hit me up there, and then uh, my demo reel is on YouTube. Excellent, excellent. Links to everything check off will be in the description and in the comment section. As you all know, this is the part of the interview where I threaten you all with physical violence to go out and check out and support check off. 
what do you think we should do to the audience? How should we physically assault them to get them to check out your stuff? Uh, I think we're gonna fucking break down their doors and give them a big old kiss on the mouth. Aw, uh, mm, pretty gay, but I guess, uh, I don't, not sure if that's hey, man, threatening enough. That? I'm sure a lot of people would actually really like that. I'm, 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 I was thinking more like putting a knife to their balls or gun in their mouth or flamethrower up their ass or something like that. Uh, see, you know, that's all well and good, but everything you said, much more sexual than anything I said. Really? Really? Okay. Uh, you, oh, you want to grab their balls and put things in their butt? A flamethrower! It's, a, it's an awfully phallic-looking thrower, isn't oh, it? Oh, dear God. And flame slang for gay. Oh, my. <laughs> I don't know if that translates to the Great White North. <laughs> Oh, okay, everyone. Point is, I will, I will hurt you. I will come to your house, and I will hurt you if you do not support and subscribe to and follow and give your money to check off. Also, if you're a client who's in need of a very, very sexy voice actor, well, uh, be sure to call oh, up check off. Give him your, give him some money. Give him a job. All right. So, any closing thoughts, check off? Um, be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. Uh. I don't know. What about you? Any closing thoughts? Give me a closing thought. You're all a bunch of pussies. Damn.